lot of weapon. We're gonna get dirty today. It is a bully, this bike. The scenery has changed quite a bit because I'm back in Rahe, Finland with the van. Because I'm here, I thought maybe we should see an old friend. Let's go see the Tenere 700 after seven months of storage. <laughs> it's gonna feel crazy different after the CRF 300. I've been driving that CRF for 4,000 kilometers already, mostly off-road. So we'll see how I feel about the Tenere after this. Let's see if I'm gonna sell the Tenere or if I'm gonna keep it. There it is, the old girl, patiently waiting for its rider. Wow, stunning bike the T7 is. All right, let's get her out. Before we take the first ride after seven months, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off that annoying center stand because it hits my leg when I ride off-road sometimes and that's enough for me to not really like it and it's heavy it's like four, five kilos maybe. Let's get it off the bike and then we'll go get our first impressions after seven months of the our breakup. <laughs> I'm sorry. So as you can see this OEM center stand is pretty big and bulky. So it's really heavy And on the other side, it's even bulkier and what I don't like about the OEM stand is that it comes so far on the left side of the bike So this is easy to hit your leg in. Let me show you from the rear as well You can see it sticks out way too much to be good off-road so you hit your leg there and you get bruises and uh, it's not a good day. So let's take it off. And just like that, the center stand is off and you don't have the problem on this side of you hitting the, hitting the leg on that stupid thing. And this is quite a heavy, Heavy thing, you know, probably like four to five kilos. I would probably stay away from the OEM center stand if I were you. Buy something third party or something else, or just forget about the center stand altogether. I know when you travel, it's very nice to have, but still look, look how light the rear end looks and the, and the bottom of the bike without the center stand on the bike. So I like it, I'm not gonna put it back. I actually already swapped the oil. You can see the oil is so nice, red and clean. I have a new filter on and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the patch plate back now before the ride. All right, back on the wheel of the Tenere 700. After seven months of riding, mostly the CRF 300L. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna feel like a weapon. Wow, this is a travel machine. The CP2 engine is so smooth. There's no rattling or anything. I can I can barely feel it running from the handlebars. But I'm I'm pretty happy about riding the Tenere again. Oh, and the sound. Oh, <laughs> that is such a glorious sound note on this especially now that they says the HP Corsa pipe. It's just a deep rumble all over the rev range. This is the best sounding motorcycle I've ever ridden. Yeah, you can dispute me in the comments. Just, just listen to it. Listen to it talk. Oh, I'm coming off the gas. Listen. Oh, it's just the best. Just the best. Woo! So much power. <laughs> oh, I missed this. Oh, what a weapon. What a weapon. <laughs> Woo! I need to take it a little easy because uh, it's 
been so long since I last rode it. I always feel like I should sell, sell this bike and get uh, something else in between the Honda and uh, the Tenere. And pretty much the only thing in between these two bikes is uh, the Husqvarna 701 or alternatively the KTM 690 of course because they're the same bike with a different color scheme. Well, it's an expensive swap because, of course, I'm not gonna get the money I put all on this bike back. And uh, I'm not really sure if I would like it as much. The CP2 engine on, on this on this Tenere, it's just in, in a completely different league. You can't really compare these two. Wow, the power feels immediate. There's no delay. When you twist the throttle, it's immediate. It just punches you in the stomach. Just twist it. And you're drifting. Woo! I love this bike. Even though it's too heavy for many things. In its own right, it's pretty close to perfection. The suspension is a little surface rough. So when there's all these little, little bumps, I feel like I have to stand up because it just rattles my bones to the core. It's very controllable, but it's just on these real, really little constant bumps, it feels really rattly. One of the million lakes of Finland. There's so many of them. I wonder if the Insta360 camera on the front is gonna be sticking on after this. <clears throat> Let's see if the camera is still there. Wow, it's still there. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. It's dirty, but it's still there. How about the rear camera? Oh, it's super dirty. So this is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to constantly clean it. Look at the view here. The water is very still because uh, there's no wind, absolutely none. Which is surprising here in the coastal of coastal Finland. Usually always windy. We're gonna get dirty today. But listen to that exhaust mount. Wow. It is a bully this bike. It's constantly telling you to ride faster, ride harder. Do it, do it, do it. It's talking to me. What I would say about the Tenere, let me close the lid, is that even though I'm, I'm definitely not the best rider, off-road especially, I would say that uh, if you're a complete novice off-road, I wouldn't recommend this bike. This is kind of dangerous. It's really top-heavy. It's not the easiest to control in my opinion. And even though it's really a lot of fun, probably not the best bike to start learning some skills off-road, even the basics. Because this bike has zero anything. It only has ABS and even that you have to turn off here. So you are completely on your own on this bike. You have no assistance. And uh, as a novice rider off-road, I would assume driving a year with the CR300, you're gonna learn a lot more and it's gonna be a lot safer. For example, driving something like that, it's, uh, it's, it's not crazy like this bike. But I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but you should probably think about it. Because this bike is absolutely bananas. It's a completely different animal. Especially off-road. Even though it's very well put together and very like composed off-road, you really have to have to wrestle it or know what you're doing to make it go fast and do it safely. 
now that I've been riding the Honda for seven months I feel like I'm a better rider on the Tenere but yeah you should just think about it and what I would say is that this bike is probably not the best travel bike either it's kind of in the in between if you want to ride two up with your wife or or husband it's gonna be maybe a little bit small for that task it's more of a humongous enduro bike in my opinion and riding with a lot of luggage or two people like something like Africa Twin or even the 850GS could possibly be a better solution but those bikes are never this fun here where it matters to me they're just simply too heavy long story long I like the Tenere I was uh, kind of hoping secretly that uh, now that I get to ride it again it's gonna feel crazy heavy and uncomfortable and uh, I'm gonna want to sell it because I've been thinking about it but now that I'm here actually riding it I don't really want to do that <laughs> This is crazy, crazy bike. Ooh, it scares me, actually scares me. After 15,000 kilometers on this bike, I'm still kind of scared to ride it. So what does that tell me? It tells me that I cannot even come close to the potential of this bike. With my skill level, I'm barely scratching the surface. This setup that I have on the suspension, even though it's a little rattly on the top surface, I feel like it's taking the big hits pretty well. Like I feel confident going into these potholes here, doing pretty much, well, enough speed. And I feel confident that the bike is gonna take in all the hits. I think the setup is good enough for me. I'm not gonna go anything crazy with this bike like rally rate suspension full front and back because it's gonna cost like 3,000 euros. That's just too much money. For very, very little gain I would assume because the Honda that I ride now with the rally rate suspension it's, it's a little bit more comfortable on these like these roads but it's not a lot. Especially the front may be even worse in the Honda, but the back is very plush. I made a video about 18 different modifications and changes to the bike before my trip to Greece. And I've done some, a few mods after that. And maybe I can talk a separate, completely separate video on the every single mod and how I like them and how, how they have performed over these 15,000 kilometers that I have on the bike. But that's a separate video. This is just me introducing myself back to the Tenere and I feel like the love is still there. Definitely. It wasn't just a summer fling. I still love this bike and the bike is still loving me back, definitely. I don't have any regret buying this. Oh, I'm fishtailing. <laughs> I love the bike still and it's my go-to if I want to travel long distances. Maybe not if I'm going to do something crazy difficult, but yeah, it's a very nice bike to take on a long trip. But don't overpack it. It's going to come, become very top heavy, even more than it is already. So don't put any top cases or anything like that on this bike. If you drive it in the city and you want practicality, maybe put a top case there, but don't travel long distances with the top case on this bike. It's gonna feel crazy. That's my advice. That's my Tenere, the beast.
it's a it's a very nice bike with all the flaws and all but i do like it what it does for me it can do for you i guess that's all i want to say i just wanted to make this reaction video because i haven't ridden the generator in so, such a long time so i thought maybe this is interesting to some people and thank you for subscribing to the channel I got a lot of subscriptions with my van video and all that stuff and I met Pavlin and we made some videos together as well which was super fun. So see you on the next videos. I'm just gonna ride back home.